All right, uh, here we are again in Chapter 8 talking about enthalpies with delta H. And we can do that in another way by keeping track of the potential energy stored in bonds. And look at how the energy changes as the bonds that we have change. So in a, in a sense, we have to know what the structures of these look like and then keep track of the energy needed to create bonds and make new ones. So CH4, pretty straightforward. Um, and we're going to be getting into the rest of this chapter. This is a little out of order. Um, these just come from Lewis structures. So if we look at CH4 and 4 fluorines, <clears throat> uh, turns into CF4. and four HFs. So the linear molecules are pretty straightforward. They are single bonds. Um, each hydrogen and fluorine only makes one bond. Carbon is allowed to have four, so it's the central one. Um, in a sense, what we're looking at here is how, to, how do we go from all of these things arranged to all of these. Well, we have to first break all of these bonds, okay, so all of these have to be severed, and then they have to be reconstituted on the other side. So I have to make all of these, and they're all in a different format. Oh, I'm missing another HF. There's four of those. So we keep track of that. Breaking bonds is exothermic, or endothermic, okay? So energy is going in. So our generic equation, it's another summation equation. Um, we say the bond's broken minus the sum of the bonds formed. Broken minus formed. When we do it in this order, the broken ones, since they come first, all bond energies are positive. So these are all positive values because these are endothermic. It takes energy to make them. And when these come together, these are exothermic on this side, so that that negative sign really distributes and means all of those are negative energies coming out. Uh, so we just keep track of all of the different types of bonds that we're looking at here. Here we have, there are four separate CH bonds plus four separate FF bonds. Okay, we add all those up. And those are, they're all the energies are positive because all bond energies are positive. Minus the sum of these over here. Now I have four CF bonds plus, and that negative sign will distribute, four HF bonds. So we can keep the totals of these and get a delta H this way as well by looking at the potential energies of the bonds. And we'll have to look at section 8.4 of the book to do that. When we look all these up, we have the CH bond is 413 kilojoules per mole. We've got four moles of it, so four, the coefficient of four there. Um, the FF bond is 154 kilojoules minus the four CFs. It's uh, 485. You can see that one's pretty high, very favorable, and the HFs, again, very favorable, 565, and those are exothermic because they're being formed. Uh, we get the total of those guys all up, and my bond energy, delta H from my bond energies is going to be exothermic, negative 1932 kilojoules, and just watch out for the math and the distribution on that one. Uh, for this one, there is a triple bond missing here. So let me kind of draw that in. Um, so if we look at this problem, CH3, these hydrogens, anytime you see that, hydrogens are on the outside. What they're showing us here is CH3, like this. Predict delta H. It's another bond energy equation. That's attached to a nitrogen, which is triple bonded to a carbon. Over here we have the CH3, the hydrogens are on the outside, uh, attached to the carbon, 
triple bonded to the nitrogen again. And we could break all of this apart and chop it up and reconstitute it, but if you look very carefully, these CH3s do not change. CH3 there is the exact same as the CH3 over here. So I don't have to break up those carbon-hydrogen bonds. They didn't change. The CN bond is the exact same. The only thing that was broken is this CN bond. And the only thing that was formed over here was a carbon-carbon bond. So if we're clever, we don't have to break apart the entire molecule. We just have to say broken minus formed. So my broken bond was a CN bond minus my carbon-carbon bond that was formed. That's the only thing that changed in this particular problem. Um, so be careful. You, could, you can simplify the problems if there are things that are still together on either side. Uh, my carbon-nitrogen um, single bond, not the triple bond, is 3O5 minus my carbon-carbon bond, 347. That's going to be my delta H value is negative 42 kilojoules. All right, negative 42 kilojoules for this reaction. Uh, and now we're going to get into Lewis structures. How do we actually draw these? We've seen the simple ones already. Um, we've counted dot diagrams. We look at how many valence electrons these guys have. Magnesium has uh, two valence electrons. Oops, let me... All right, here we go. Magnesium has two valence electrons. Aluminum has three. Carbon has four, and we go one on each side, and then we start doubling them up. Hydrogen just has one. Oxygen has six. Neon has eight valence electrons. These are supposed to be evenly distributed. Helium's a tricky one because its subshell, it only has a 1s subshell. 1s and then it can fill up two electrons and that's it. So its dot structure has both electrons on the same side. Those are not distributed apart. Um, we, we casually say we're trying to fill up the octet rule to fill up those eight valence electrons, but hydrogen and helium, they don't need 10. They only need two. They, they follow, it is actually a word, we call it the duet rule. They only need two electrons. So we'll never complete the octets on those guys. All right, Lewis structures that obey the octet rule. So first we have chlorine. Uh, well, let's undo some of this for a minute. Let's walk through it. Uh, chlorine, and then it has... It has seven uh, valence electrons. My other chlorine has seven valence electrons as well. And I, I intentionally put them facing one another uh, so that these two in the middle make a shared pair that is bonded. So the lone pairs, I'm sorry, the, the lone electrons bond. And there are two electrons in that that they're sharing, and then they're counted both ways. Okay, um, so we casually say this chlorine has eight electrons when we count those two that way, and the other chlorine now has eight electrons when we count them that way. It's like a Venn diagram. Those two electrons count on both atoms. Um, CH2Cl2. Well, our carbon is in the middle, Carbon is allowed to have four bonds. So it has hydrogens on it. Each hydrogen is allowed to have one. And then it has chlorines on it. Each chlorine is allowed to make one bond. Except my chlorines also need to fill the octets. Carbon has its octet full because it has four bonds of shared electrons. Hydrogen has their duets filled. Um, H2CO. Oxygen, you'll remember has six valence electrons 
it's allowed to make two bonds. Now there's only three things attached here to this carbon, so watch what happens. Carbon's allowed to make four bonds, okay? Carbon's allowed to make four bonds. Um, those hydrogens are going to take up two of them. That means there's two left on the carbon and oxygen needs two. So oxygen is going to be getting a double bond here. Let's do it this way. Because each of those hydrogens are going to take a single, a single bond. And now carbon's got two more, oxygen has two more. And I want you to see how we did this. When you draw that, if you catch that they're sharing that way, um, we're drawing this in a triangle. This carbon only has three bonding regions. That double bond actually stays together on one side of the atom. So I'm not looking at this as a carbon with four sides now. I'm going to look at it as a carbon with three sides. And electrons repel each other, they spread each other out. If you can draw this in a triangle and see that ahead of time, uh, that's going to go a long way later when we start visualizing shapes. Now oxygen here, we're not done. We need to fill, oh, let me do this. We need to fill the octets. Now the same thing with oxygen's lone pairs. It has a double bond on the carbon. We're going to put its lone pairs kind of off at an angle like a triangle as well. So that all of these angles from here to here, and then this bond to those electrons, and then those between each other, these make a triangle also. Um, NH3 <clears throat> is hydrogens always get single bonds, so we put those in and we see what's left. Nitrogen's allowed to have three bonds, so that looks really good. Nitrogen has two electrons to fill out its lone pair. CO2, carbon's allowed to have, oh, let's switch back to a pin. Carbon's allowed to have four bonds. Each oxygen is allowed to have two. That's going to pair them up in a double bond fashion on both sides. So we draw this. This one's why we, uh, we draw it. It's called linear. It's 180 degrees apart. It's because it only has two regions, so they spread out as far as possible. You wouldn't put them at like a 90 degree angle. That doesn't make sense. Um, and then each of these oxygens needs electrons as well. Oxygen has two lone pairs. We will put those at a triangle because now each oxygen has three regions, the two lone pairs and a double bond. Double bond, two lone pairs. So these are at a triangle. Carbon with its two double bonds is only bonding in two regions of space. We're going to put them 180 degrees apart from one another. Um, these are the Lewis structures we expect you to be able to do quickly. They follow their simple Lewis dot structures. And the when you're dealing with really small elements um, in really simple ratios that match their dot structures, you want to be able to just draw them and know how many bonds each one can have. That doesn't mean they're bound to this, but these are certainly the easiest ones to draw. Um, this next set is a little harder to draw. We actually need to do a little bit of math for it because they, they're ionic. They don't always fit their dot structure. Just because oxygen regularly gets two bonds does not mean it's, it has to. So here's where we look at ICL2. ICL2+. Plus. And we say, how many electrons are in this? We need to do a calculation here. For ICL2, it has, um, there are three halogens, 21 valence electrons, but it's positive, so we only have 20 electrons. So if my iodine, how, how we know we need to do this is like, I know that there's three atoms here that can only have one bond with traditional Lewis dot diagrams. So something's wrong. This isn't matching the way that we expect iodine and chlorine to bond. So we, we say, okay, let's count the electrons. It has 20. Now for each one of those to fill the octet, we need 24. And I'm going to say full octets make atoms happy. This is the only time you're allowed to calculate molecule happiness. Um, we're going to see here, that means they're missing four electrons. And if electrons come in pairs, this is going to tell me there are two bonds. There are two bonds. Now we could kind of surmise that with the Cl2. Iodine's in the middle. We're going to put our chlorines over on the outsides. And now we really want to pay attention to these 20 electrons and make sure they're all there. 
All right. So, Mike, each chlorine has an octet. Oh, let's get back to the gray. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the bond is seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. That gives me 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that fills all of their octets. We, we know how many bonds we have. Um, we just we put it there. And then since it's ionic, we're going to put it in brackets and say, oh, by the way, this whole thing is positive. All right. NO3 minus. Let's do that one. Um, this has, each oxygen has six valence electrons, so 18. And five more gives me 23, plus an extra negative one charge gives me 24 electrons. Okay. Um, now, there are four things here. Four times eight gives me 32 electrons in order to fill the octets. And octets make molecules happy. That means this molecule is missing eight electrons. Divided by two, that gives me four bonds. Now, we wouldn't have caught this if we just tried to bond it to the nitrogen. We need four bonds here. But there's only three things attached to that nitrogen. So what do we do? Oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. They're at a triangle, because there's three of them. But one of them is getting a double bond. So, and then we fill the octets, and we say, okay, this oxygen needs six, and it's only going to get a single bond, and that's okay. Nitrogen has eight, that's good. This one has a double, so we're going to put those kind of at a triangle shape there. And that's going to count, that's all 24 of my electrons. So that gets me in a really good shape. But the question is, how do we know which oxygen to put it on? Um, those are all the 24 electrons, that's totally correct. But... The, the truth is that can go on any of the oxygens. So that can go down here as well, or over there. Um, and we kind of put brackets around them because we say, hey, this is ionic. And it's not that any one is favored over the other. In actuality, it's an average between all three, and this is our resonance structure. All right, uh, let me go through here and get all the oxygens. The double bond is going to be at an angle. The other oxygens are good. And this is called resonance. So it's an average of all three of those. It's not that that bond is moving, it's that it's shared evenly, distributed evenly everywhere. I don't actually have single and double bonds, it's more like one and a third um, for that resonance. Um, let's do, we're going to keep shrinking this here, ClO4 minus one. Okay. Each oxygen has 6, so 24. Chlorine has 7, so 31. And then another one gives me 32 electrons. There are 5 atoms times 8 to fill the octets. Gives me 40 to fill the octets. We call that happiness. So that's 8 electrons deficient that it's missing in order to fill the octets. Those are going to have to be shared in sets of 2 for bonds and that gives me four bonds. So this one then, there are four things attached to the chlorine. There are four bonds. So this is a straightforward one. No resonance, no double bonds to worry about. We just have this structure here. It's ionic, so we say minus one. We put all the dots on it. Each oxygen has eight electrons. And that gives me the 32 that we need, and that structure is complete. Uh, the last one has NH4+, plus. kind of box out some space for that. Um, now this is one we could 
calculate all the electrons. It, it's still, still good to do that. I've got five from the nitrogen, four from the hydrogen, so nine. That positive one means we lost one. There's only eight electrons there. Um, there. There can't be any double bonds here. Hydrogens only have single bonds, so there's no need to go through that all the time. With simple things, we said uh, it's good to just draw them. We don't have to go through the calculation. Um, that takes care of all eight electrons, and there's just four bonds on the nitrogen. So don't overcomplicate them when we don't have to. Uh, this is this last one here. It says ICL3. We will just go ahead and handle that in the next one when they don't um, obey the octet rule. To be continued.